So just to go further, I want us to focus in on what's happening to the pulley. So we can consider, and we'll sometimes be asked to, consider the pulley and the forces that are acting on it. So I'm just going to redraw to zoom in and focus just on the pulley. Now, just a quick consideration you may not be aware of. Tension in the string. We usually draw the tension going away from the particles that we're focusing on. But now that we're focusing on the pulley, we're going to draw the tension going away from the pulley. So it's really just away from the object of interest. So I've got the tension here. And actually, I'm just going to redraw this one more time. So we're purely looking at the forces and the direction that these forces are moving. So I've got this vertical tension and I've also got a diagonal tension. Diagonals, we know we can represent them as their horizontal and vertical component. So once we put the angle in, we can get an expression for both this horizontal and vertical component. And from there, we should now be able to generate a resultant force that is acting on the pulley. So horizontally, we're moving to the left by T cosine alpha. And vertically, we're moving down with T sine alpha and T. All right, so this is the vector that we get. Uh, we can rewrite that bottom component. We can rewrite that vertical component by factorizing out the T. All right, we've already calculated T, so we can actually get numerical values for this vector. This vector is the force acting on the pulley. So just substitute these values, substitute in the value of T, and I actually just get a numerical vector, and it's back to a year 12 question where I can find the magnitude, I can find the angle, I can find the direction. So from here on in, it should actually be quite a nice, straightforward question. But modeling the forces on the pulley itself, knowing to break the diagonal into its components, knowing the tension should be going away from the pulley, those are the bits that I now want you to consider. Okay, so the magnitude of R with a bit of Pythagoras, 103 to three significant figures. Let's take a look at what this vector looks like. So we're moving to the left and we're moving down. Move left by 46 and down by 92. If I was asked what direction the force acts in, I'm going to use a spot of trigonometry. So inverse tan of 92 over 46 gives me 63.435. We're going for three significant figures again, 63.4 degrees below the horizontal. So I can give it as a bearing or I can just give some more detail to what the 63.4 degrees represents. Okay, so the forces on a pulley. A couple more diagrams are needed to really be clear about the direction and the magnitude of the forces that act on the pulley.